Getting the Most Out of Jest Acts, presented by Steve Barnett, Alleycamp 2021. We'd like to thank our gold sponsors Telstra and Intopia, our silver sponsors ANZ and Coles, and our bronze sponsor How To. Business. Hello there. I want to talk to you about getting the most out of Jest Acts. The most important thing that I'd like you to remember from this talk is that with a little more effort, just acts can be a lot more useful. And hopefully I can show you why. Agenda. We're going to talk about one, what is just acts? Two, how do we set it up? Three, how could we test? And four, what else could we do? Hi, I'm Steve Barnett. I'm white, I identify as male, my pronouns are he, him. I work as a technical digital accessibility analyst at Zero. Uh, based in Wellington, Aotearoa, New Zealand. You can find me on the internet at naga.co.za, which is my personal internet blog, web, internet site. My most used emoji, possibly my favorite emoji, is the grimace emoji. And I think it's because I like to ask awkward questions and then deploy said emoji. Chapter one, what is Jest X? Well, let's quickly say what is Jest. Uh, JestJS.io, the website for Jest, says it's a delightful JavaScript testing framework. Um, yes, I'm not sure how much delight I've had on a day-to-day -day basis using it, but I mean, it's definitely a test framework and it's definitely kind of simple to use. So sure, delight, but I like it. What is Jest Axe? Well, that's a custom matcher for Axe for testing accessibility. So in a normal uh, Jest test, we might see something like expect one plus two to be three. To be or not to be, that is the assertion. Well, that's the matcher, the to be part. That's one of the things that just X adds for us. It adds a new matcher, which we'll see in a moment, and it adds X to run against the HTML of our rendered component. So that was what is just X. Chapter two, how do we set it up? Installation is very similar to other NPM packages. In the terminal, you do npm install dash dash save dev just x. So it's as easy and as difficult as any other NPM package really. Configuration. Well, we have two options. Option one, we could do it in every for every component, for every test. We import x and to have no violations from just x. And then we extend our expect, expects.extend to have no violations. We're importing X so that we have the X rule set to run against our rendered component. And we're importing this to have violations to extend the matcher, to be able to check, I've done X on my code, does it have any violations? Hence the name, I guess, to have no violations. Option two is to configure it using helpers. Uh, this is probably the way that many of us will use it because we'll have lots of tests and we don't want to repeat the same code in tests. You might have a, a test utils file or a helpers file or something like that. In there, you'll want to import configure X from just X and turn off this one rule. And it is just one rule. And I'll say a bit more about why in a moment. The one rule that you'll want to turn off is region. This is a best practice rule. This says, all page content must be contained in landmarks. Now, while this is a great rule and a best practice that we do want to follow, in these kind of tests, we're normally only doing a bit of the page, a component or several components pulled together. So chances are we won't have a whole page. So this rule just doesn't apply. Part of Axe's manifesto is that it returns zero false positives. You can read more about Axe and uh, its various flavors at dq.com slash Axe. Um, and what, what returning zero false positives means uh, in practice is that X is probably right. I have been caught by this a number of times. I'll write the just X test. It will say something is failing. I'll look at it. I'll think, no, no, it's fine. Um, X is probably wrong. I'm probably right. Then I'll come back to it the next day and realize that actually X was right and I was wrong. Um, do a face palm and then... Uh, fix the broken code and carry on with my life. Another thing we want to do in the helper is to do that expect extend. 
So we'll import to have no violations from just X, and then we'll extend the expect. If we're doing uh, both bits of this, the global config and the extend in the expect in our test utils or helpers file, we'll probably put them both in the same import, but I've left them separate here just so that we can see things in, in isolation. Let's have a look at a, a test or like a sketch of a test because the specifics of it will change depending on whether you're using React or Vue or Angular and whether, what kind of testing library you're using. So in our component file at the very top, we'll have a bunch of imports and things probably. Then we'll have our test block or it block. For access stuff, for just access stuff, we'll want to make sure that it's async. Um, then in the expect, we'll do await axe container. The container here is the mounted or rendered component, and we can stick it into anything we want. Here, I've decided to call it container because of reasons. Um, and then on the right-hand side, dot to have no violations. So we expect X once it's run on our components to have no violations. Seems kind of relatively straightforward. So that was how we set it up. Chapter three. What could we test? This is going to be a chunky one. Well, what, what could we test? I mean, that, that's a really great question. Thank you for asking. I, I appreciate that. Um, I might have an answer. Do we want to test everything? Well, probably no. Um, that will take a very long time. And I'm not sure how much value for effort to kind of we get out of testing everything 100%. So do we want to test nothing? Well, definitely no. That would be a weird thing for me to say if I'm giving a talk about testing, right? No, test nothing. Uh, so we should test some stuff. But what? Well, I kind of feel like we should take the middle away, you know, somewhere between these two extremes of everything and nothing. Um, a good kind of a hint for when to do a test, uh, for, to do a just X test is, has the UI changed? If it has, then we probably want to do a just X test on it. But let's, let's dig into that a little bit more. Should we add a just X when we have a mount or a render in a test file? Probably yes. Um, if we have a test that is mounting a component, say an accordion with its is open prop, um, we'll have a couple of other tests probably checking for what classes we've added or removed, what's the text inside them, um, possibly labels on things, that kind of stuff. Um, and then we just want to add our expect await X component to have no violations. Now, the thing inside the X function needs to be the HTML of the rendered component. So again, depending on the testing, uh, the JavaScript framework and the testing library you're using, the inside of that X will be slightly different. This example, I've got a mount from a React with enzyme example. So in my, um, in my expectation at the bottom, I've got component.html, bracket, bracket. That's to make sure that I grab the HTML of the component and Axe is checking that because that's the only thing it can check. And that's the thing that we wanted to check. Should we add a just Axe test when we have lots of mounts or renders in one test file? This is a fairly common occurrence. Um, and do we want to add just Axe then? Well, probably yes. And we probably want to do it for, if not all of them, then most of them. So one way of doing this is to use a cheeky after each. I say cheeky because I like the word cheeky. At the very top of our test file, we will want to do let component, declare the variable because we're going to reuse it a bunch, and then have an after each block. Um, asynchronous, check if there's a component in the, in the block that we're running through using this after each, and then do our expect there, expect await x component.html to have no violations. This is a nice kind of sneaky, cheeky way of checking the whole test file, every component that we render. Should we add a just x for every variant, like every color, every state? Oof, well, probably yes. Like if we have our buttons, we've got our primary state, our secondary state, and so on. We probably want to check those for color contrast and whatnot. Um, a nice kind of rule of, uh, a nice kind of shortcut, mental shortcut for this is like, is there a Boolean prop on this component? Well, we probably have two tests for that then, one for the true bit, one for the false bit. So do we want to just X? Probably yes, twice, one for each one. 
And depending on how our code is set up, we could use that after each trick again to quickly run through a bunch of the different tests. So that could be quite handy. Do we want to add a just X test when we're changing an ARIA attribute? Well, very probably yes. This feels like the absolute best this place to be running X. I mean, we want to run it on the other ones too, but this is like, oh, this is where I feel like I have made lots of mistakes and I'm at you, but this is where I would like some help in making sure that my code is good. So some examples might be accordions, um, the having ARI expanded on the button that opens and closes the accordion content or tabs to mark which tab is active is the right tab content showing and, and so on. Uh, special shout out to my friend and yours, Errors. <laughs> uh, Acts would be good for helping us here to check if we're doing the right kind of thing with ARIA invalid and ARIA described by. You know, are we using the right values? Are we using the right um, attributes? This kind of thing. I find that errors, errors are one of the trickiest places to work on. So this is where I kind of lean on Acts the most. How much interaction could we test? Well, do we want to test every interaction, like every click, every keyboard stroke, uh, every keystroke? Well, probably no. Do we want to test none of the interactions? Well, also probably no. I kind of feel like we want to take the middle way again, you know, somewhere in between the two. For full-on end-to-end user flows, we want to use a probably an end-to-end -end testing tool, you know, like uh, Puppeteer or Cypress or Selenium if you're old school or something else if you're... Um, hanging around with the cool kids. Um, and a hint for this one is like, are we, what we could do is to use ARIA attributes as the selectors for these particular things. It feels like that's another kind of way of checking that we're doing the right thing and pointing at the right bit of the UI. Should we add a just X test for the same stuff as you put in our storybook stories? Very probably yes. If you're not familiar with Storybook, you can check it out at storybook.js.org. It's little bits of UI in isolation. So, you know, like the middle of your page or the nav bar or bits like this. It's a really nice way of having real bits of UI with fake content, I guess, um, to be able to test them, to be able to share them with our colleagues and to be able to see that it's doing, when we put the components together, they're kind of doing what we think that they're doing. Um, so th this is a really good kind of proxy or um, analog for like, what is the kind of thing we want to be running just X against? Well, the UI storybook gives us little pockets and packets of UI samples. That seems like a good thing to be running against. So whatever state we're putting the UI into in a storybook story, that seems like a good thing to put into a state for a, a just test with just X. Should we add the accessibility add-on for Storybook? Because it has one, which is lovely. Yes, please, please do add it, it's lovely. Essentially what this does is to run acts on your stories. It gives you a kind of pass, passes and, does it call it violations or fails? I think it calls it violations, but it shows you passes and fails, which is great. However, my recommendation is to still keep just acts in your unit tests, even if you have the accessibility add-on for Storybook. My thinking for this is that Storybook is over there. Like you have to go and poke around in it and check in Storybook for any uh, errors, any violations. If we put the testing in our unit test, it's right there. It's in our way when we're doing our work. Storybook, we have to seek out, but just acts, it's in our unit tests. It blocks things. It might even break the build. I feel like that's much more in the way. And I don't know about you, but this feels like a thing that is more helpful to me. It's more obvious. It's more in my face. I can't, I can't forget about it because it's right there, right there. Hey, Steve, you say to me as we're queuing for lunch tomorrow, we have a design system, but it doesn't have just X in it. Well, I say, this might be a good time to talk to some people about getting just X into it. You don't need to try and put it everywhere at once. Um, you can put it somewhere small to start with, maybe just on the buttons, like on one or two of the states perhaps. Um, but getting it in there seems to be the hard part. You know, getting it started is always a bit tricky, but once you've got started, you'll find it a little bit easier to add another test here, add another test, test there. Hey Steve, you say to me the day after tomorrow when we're queuing for lunch again, 
we have a design system and it has it has just X. Like, wow, that, that that was fast. How did you how did you do that so quickly? Uh, but well done, good work, love it. Um, I think it's still worth adding just X to our code, even if the design system code has a bunch of just X tests in it. Why do I think that? Well, number one, we might pick up bugs the design system hasn't spotted. Possible? Yes, unlikely, eh, maybe also yes, but you know, worth checking. Number two, we might pick up places where we aren't quite implementing the design system correctly. So maybe the design system is perfect, it's got maximum accessibility, it's lovely, we love it, everybody loves it, yay. But we kind of did something wrong. We forgot to add a label or we've nested something incorrectly. Just X will pick that up for us and say, hey, this does not look quite right. Perhaps you should take a look and perhaps you should fix it. Thanks, Just X. That was what could we test? Chapter four, what else could we do? Well, this was all about automated testing, but we could also do manual testing. Automated testing can't cover everything uh, and neither can manual testing unless you have infinite time. But what I like about manual testing is it's much closer to the user's experience of our product or service. Three things I like to do for manual testing, uh, all of it, which could be a whole talk on, them, on their own, I think, um, are keyboard, uh, you know, test your, um, test your components and your site and your app with just the keyboard, no mouse, no trackpad. Uh, test it by zooming in, either using a zoom tool or the kind of classic command or control plus, plus, plus to poof, bump up the text sizes of everything and test with the screen reader. All of these things draw us closer to how people are actually experiencing our work. What else could we do? We could involve people with disabilities in our research and our usability testing. And the earlier, the better. This helps us learn more about the real people in the real world and the wide range of human experience the people using our products and our services. Quick recap. Number one, we talked about what is just X. Number two, we talked about how do we set it up. Number three, we talked about what could we test. Number four, we talked about what else could we do. The most important thing that I hope you have taken away from this talk is that with a little more effort, just X can be a lot more useful. Thanks for listening. Alley Camp 2021.